So let's hop straight into it. With this first question, we're going to be talking about the variation. Uh, the graph below shows variation in the concentration of CO2. Very important to know that this is CO2 um, in the atmosphere, so uh, within the air, um, as measured at Mauna Loi, lower in Hawaii. And the IB, you get to know them quite well, but they love Mauna Loi. Uh, I can't pronounce it, but it's a it's a very popular mountain that they talk about. And the small insect graph shows the variations in CO2 during a one-year period. Insect graph is this this one here, this one here that I've just highlighted there. So we have to answer why the amount of CO2 falls between April and August. So let's look at this. April and August is probably from about here to about here. So you know we do have this definite de decline, and we have to explain why. Um, so let's look at the different answers because that will be the most uh, obvious way to come to the right answer. So a seasonal increase A eh, in the rate of photosynthesis in the northern hemisphere forests. So we're talking about an increase in the rate of photosynthesis. So let's talk let's see if that corresponds to a decrease in CO2. So increase in photosynthesis, um, we have uh, CO2 plus H2O plus light going to C6H12O6 as well as um, oxygen. Okay, so if we increase the rate of photosynthesis then we'd have a decreased um, CO2 and we'd have an increased this production. So yes, that makes sense so far. So, but if, so that one's kind of okay right now, we'll put a dot next to it. How about B, a seasonal decrease in the rate of photosynthesis in the northern hemisphere forests. So this one's exactly the opposite. If there was a decrease in the rate of photosynthesis, we'd expect the CO2 to go up because we wouldn't be getting these products. These products would be decreasing and then these products would be increasing, right? So that's what we'd expect. So straight away we know that B is incorrect. How about C, a seasonal decrease in the rate of fossil fuel consumption? So this possibly could make sense as well. So we have a decrease in the, in the CO2, um, decrease in CO2 due to uh, decrease in the, in the burning of like oil and petrol and thing, things like that. And um, I suppose that could make sense as well, but A seems to make more sense right now because it's giving a more thorough explanation about photosynthesis and uh, a scientific explanation behind it. But um, so I, I would say that C is uh, incorrect right now. Sorry, B is incorrect as well as C. And finally D, a seasonal increase in the amount of CO2 dissolved in the oceans. That one seems a bit like a red herring answer as well. I mean, it would make sense if you had CO2, if you had carbon dioxide being dissolved in the, in the oceans, then the amount in the atmosphere would decrease. However, um, it just doesn't seem to add up to me. So I believe the answer would be A, and that indeed is the correct answer. Okay, so the next question is, what is a potential consequence of the rise in global temperatures on the Arctic ecosystem? And they always, they always foresee the, this apocalyptic kind of uh, environment. And I think the important thing to know is that, kind of understand where the IB is coming from this. They, want, they just want to warn your students that anytime that you have a rise in global temperatures, you usually have something bad, you have a bad uh, repercussions with following. So increased exposure to UV light, um, A. So that one, it seems like, if you just scan it, it seems like it, um, uh, it seems like it might be right, but then the thing is that it's talking about a consequence, like what is the result of increased global temperatures? Um, and the thing is that increased exposure to UV light is not correct due to that, so it's not that one. Uh, increased rate of decomposition of detritus. Uh, yes, that, that is true, because if you have increase in temperatures, then you have an increased rate of enzymes. Because remember, we're not talking about you know, 5, 10 degree jumps, we're talking about say half a degree, one degree. And if you have an increased rate of enzymes and things, they break down faster, things they tend to metabolize faster. So breaking down or decomposition uh, does increase. But let's look at the other two. So decreased success of pest species. No, you usually have an increased success of pest species. Um, and D, an increase in the ice habitat available to polar bears. Well, that's just silly, because if you had an increase in temperature, more ice would melt. So ice habitat would decrease. So that's incorrect. So the correct answer is B. Question three. 
which gas will enhance the greenhouse effect if released into the atmosphere? And there's not really that much I can, that you can elicit from this question apart from knowing the answer. And you need to know that the answer is um, oxides of nitrogen. It's B here. But if you think about the other ones as well, like hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, well, oxygen, first off, I mean, we need that to breathe. So the fact that we're, that it's been giving off, being given off, that shouldn't really have any effect on the environment. And same with the other hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen as well. So if you could, all those three, they're actually uh, one of the part of the four fundamental building blocks of life. The four fundamental building blocks. Remember Chon, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen? Well, those are really important. And the fact that they've been given off, they've been given off so frequently, so it's unlikely that they'll have any effect on the atmosphere. So in this case, the answer is B. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.